Well, good morning. Uh, that was a really like low key countdown, so I feel like we should all take a nap. Now. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I hopefully hopefully you've had your coffee this morning. Um, I have, so that's that's good. Uh, I'm glad that you guys are here today. Today is Family Sunday, one of my favorite Sundays. Uh, the first Sunday of every month, we invite the children to stay with us instead of going back into kids' church. And they get to hang out with us and participate in different ways. Uh, The teens do as well. So we've got teens and kids on the platform today helping us in worship um, and leading us today to the throne room, and I love that. And uh, if you are new today, we welcome you. We're glad you're here. For those of you online, we're having a couple of technical difficulties, which is, you know, normal in life online. So if you don't see any of the words and you don't see any of the typical things that you see online, we apologize. We're figuring it out. Uh, But hopefully uh, God's going to meet you where you're at, regardless of you having the words today. So would you stand with us today? There is nothing that our God can't do. We're just going to open this morning with big, loud worship. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a prison wall he can't break through. Oh, praise the name. at the beginning just to get us kind of on our feet and uh, blood running through our bodies and awake in our mind and spirit. Hey, Kristen, can you hand me that book right there? Thank you. This morning, uh, Pastor Chris, the other pastor here, the other lead pastor here, uh, is in Washington State at a wedding of a young man that grew up under his leadership as a youth pastor back in the day. So, um, Yeah, just in case you're like, where's Chris? That's where he is. And so today we're holding down the fort. Pastor Kristen and I are holding down the fort. All right. So this morning we're going to open with an opening prayer. Pastor Chris always says invocation. So just in case you are always wondering, what does that word mean? It means opening prayer. So pray with me. Make us worthy, Lord, to serve you. And all the world's people who live and die in loneliness, hunger, poverty, and sickness. Give them through our hands this day their daily bread. And by our understanding love, give them peace and joy. Amen. 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 John 14 says this, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you? And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. So the Lord continues to invite us to a place of participation in the kingdom of God, just like we prayed that mo- this morning, that opening prayer, make us worthy, Lord, to serve you and all the world's people. And so today we're going to talk a little bit more about participation. But before we do that, Michelle Vinton is coming to give us some announcements, and to invite us to a time of fellowship. Good morning, church. Do we have celebration fund? Hey, 
didn't pay me to do such a good job. Um, yay! Okay. Um, uh, sorry, I'm behind here. Okay, I do know that we're celebrating, apparently the, the Guitros gave, so yay. What are we celebrating? Oh, A's. A successful trip in all A's. Those are things to celebrate. We're celebrating. Okay. And the Glovers, who are all gone, all of them, every last Glover is gone. To, they've fled the country. They're in England. They're in Europe. On a cruise, whatever. Forget about them for the next month. But for now, to kick it off, we're going to celebrate. Um, Jeff and Sherry have donated to celebrate, um, and he wanted me to specifically say, um, long live King Charles. I, th I think he's King Charles III, is that right? I believe so. I've just started watching The Crown, and so I'm very invested in the royal family. I feel like I am part of them or know so much about them. Anyway, long live King Charles, so, so it's NYC money, so celebrate. And then um, uh, they celebrated Pastor Chris's birthday last week. <gasps> Wasn't that nice of them to donate for that? So up until then, and then I'm not sure how much was donated, but we're right about $1,600. Which is exciting. Yes. You donated. Karen Davis paid to celebrate. Cody is doing great in college. Yay. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we're at roughly $1,620. Amazing. Yes, Pastor Cherie. Yeah, what is the celebration fund for? That's a really great question. Anyone? It's for youth conference. Yeah, Nazarene youth conference specifically, not just any youth conference. Um, yes. It's a time where students from all over the United States and Canada and missionary kids um, gather together. We're going to be in Tampa, Florida in June, so pray for us. Um, and we are going to have intense time of hearing from God, of gathering together. Of um, It's a piece of, of students recognizing, hey, we're bigger than ourselves. We're bigger than the connection. We're bigger than Colorado. Um, we are called to, to be part of this great kingdom work that God is doing and the ways that God is breaking into um, creation and, and calling us back to himself. Um, and it's a time when many, many students um, feel the call of God on their lives. And that could be to full-time ministry, um, like myself and Pastor Chris and Cherie are in. Um, that could be God is calling them to, to work in medicine or to serve overseas, or to be a parent, which is something they never thought about. Who knows? Um, but this is a space where um, leaders work for years to curate a very specific, special time of service, of worship, of gathering, and fellowship for students to hear the voice of God. And if you haven't spent much time with students, one of their biggest questions, which I think is one of the biggest questions for adults as well, is how do I know when God is talking? How do I hear the voice of God? And I'm going to tell you, for the low, low price of $2,100, they can. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, sort of. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, but it's a, it's a time where we are very intentional about everything that is happening throughout that whole week. Um, and it truly, honestly, in some ways, it is a low, low price of $2,100 because I don't think you can put a value on those kinds of experiences. And I don't think we can put a value on the importance of young people and their discipleship and their calling into the work that God is doing. Yeah? So that's what we're celebrating. So thanks for celebrating with us. Thanks for donating. We're about able to send one child, one student, one person to NYC, which is awesome. And if we get up to 6000 by Christmas, what happens? Pastor Cherie shaves her head. I'm just kidding. Pastor Kristen dyes her hair blue. You wish. You wish. All right, if you donate a ton, maybe we can work something out. We'll see. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who donated to the Celebration Fund. Um, we, can, we can celebrate small things and big things. So just a reminder, um, if you want to donate on Venmo, just make a comment that it's for the Celebration Fund so we can announce it on Sunday mornings. Yeah. We have some fun things coming up. Um, it's fall. And fall means chilly. So we have an annual, well, I, don't, I think we might have skipped a few thanks to COVID, but we do have an annual chili cook-off here in church. And so if you have a pretty amazing recipe, let's, 
bring it, right? Uh, we're going to celebrate our chili cook-off uh, with s'mores uh, on October 30th, and the top three chilies get a prize. So let's see if we can knock some of those um, top annual winners off and uh, s introduce some new chilies this year. Yes. Invitations will be printed for you, so you can invite your neighborhood friends, and the kids will also have a costume party that night. So that'll be a lot of fun, right? We have s'mores, we have a chili contest, uh, we have costume party, so it's going to be a lot of fun. October 30th, so put that on your calendars. Um, also, put Sunday, November 20th on your calendar. That's the star lighting here in Castle Rock that great big star that they have up on the rock. Um, we're going to meet up in town, uh, probably at Lost Coffee at 6 p.m. so that we can gather together and watch that as a church as it happens. Uh, Ten days after that is November 30th, and we're going to deck the halls, which means we're going to decorate this church for the holidays. And that is a fun and special time to get together um, and um, just spend some time together as we put up the Christmas tree and put up all the decorations for the holidays. We also have a holiday potluck and an NYC dessert auction on Sunday, December 4th after the morning service. I'm sure we'll be getting more details about that, but if you want to reserve that spot on December 4th after service, we'll be having a potluck. Uh, our tithe and offerings. Um, we need about $17,000 a month to operate our church facility here and support our pastors. Uh, last month, we came in at $10,449. Uh, so I just want to remind you that it's easy to tithe. Uh, we have a box if you're old school and you like to write checks or put cash in. Uh, we accept Venmo at the Connection-Church. We also accept PayPal through our website. Um, so we just want to remind you of what our monthly needs are for the church here. We also have a hope box outside. Does it have new doors yet? Oh, it will soon. Yeah. And the weather's changing. So think about when you donate to the hope box. If you don't know, it's, it's emptied every week, pretty much. It's getting used. And as the weather changes, um, cold weather things, hand warmers, socks, hats, um, the kinds of foods that won't melt because they've been in in the summer. Um, we can go ahead and fill that box up out there, and that would be greatly appreciated by those in need in our community. It's a great way to reach out uh, to those who need a little extra help. Also, um, if you don't know, or if you've forgotten, uh, Heather makes these beautiful cards. Um, if you have been to the store recently, and not the dollar store, because, you know, that's where I've been going, um, cards cost like 5 to $7 now, right? And so these are handmade cards. They go to a great purpose. Um, she is able to donate um, to upwards of $500 a year to anti-human trafficking. Um, and so the holidays are coming up. And if that's something you want to do, look through your cards. There's every kind of card in there um, that you could want. And if you do want some holiday cards, feel free to talk to Heather and she can get some made up for you. And uh, with that, we are going to... Um, Go into a time of fellowship with each other, so stand up and say hello to your neighbor.
Harris, would you stand with us? Let's sing the whole song of There's Nothing That Our God Can't Do. We believe that with all of our hearts. Sing this with me. Just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. Just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch. My eyes were open to see, my heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that he can move. Well, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Just one word, you heal what's broken inside. participation as a kingdom people and we are we are made you guys we're made to worship God that's one of our main desires or one one of our main designs and so we're here to worship so this song so here I am to worship 
Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. Let's sing Light of the World. Sing with us. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, sing with us. King of all days, oh so high. today for who you are. You are worthy of our worship and you're worthy of our praise. And so Lord, as we continue to lean into you this morning, as we continue to lean into who you are and what you say about who we are, Lord, I ask you would transform our minds and our hearts. Lord, one of the things that we'll learn again this morning is that this isn't just a Sunday morning to check a box and say we went to church. This is a morning to meet with you and be transformed by your spirit. So today we lean in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, would you remain standing as we hear from Ashton? He's going to read Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world and the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and it makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, 
giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than more than pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honey honeycomb. By them your servant your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my reminder. This is word of, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Yeah, good job, buddy. Um, we understand that the kingdom of God belongs to such as these, right? So we love it when our kids lead us in worship, and we believe that they are able to hear from God in a way that um, at times we kind of lose growing up. So I love that. I love Ashton. Thanks for leading us in scripture. It means a lot. We're going to learn a new song today. Um, I know that we, we do that uh, about once every six weeks here at The Connection. This song is called Same God. And what I love about our understanding of who God is is that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So all the way back at the beginning of time when God existed long before we even took our first breath, he was the same then as he is today. And this song speaks of that. So this, this is the chorus. I want to teach you real quick. Uh, Micah, can you just put the chorus on there? Uh, this is the chorus. So you guys, as, you, as we learn it this morning, you know some of it already. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. All right, like sing that with me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock of ages. Oh rock, oh rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. Amen. So we're going to learn that song today. It's called Same God. The beginning says these words, I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through all generations. We're going to sing of the God that was then and still is the same today. Amen. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. All right, you know this part. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock of ages. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. Calling on the God of Mary. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lowly. I know with you all things are possible. Calling on the God. I'm calling on the God of David, who made a shepherd boy courageous. I may not face Goliath, but I've got my own giants. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now. 
we serve hears us the same way that he heard all the way back then. And we're going to sing about that. You heard your children then, and you hear your children now. You heard your children then. You hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answered prayers back. about you that changes. We give you praise for that. For we don't have to wonder how you are and how you think and how you love and how you lead us. We give you praise for that, Jesus. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Would you sing with us? I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Almighty river, come and fill Pastor Kristen and David are coming to lead us in prayer this morning as we hang out with Jesus. God, thank you for bringing us here for protecting us in these times of, of sickness and just various things going around. Thank you for gathering us together to worship you in this building. We lift up all the needs presented in this church by everybody, all the unspoken or spoken needs. We bring them before you together um, because we know when, when we pray together, you are here in our midst listening to us and hearing our prayers. We pray that we go throughout these weeks and months to the end of the year, showing your love to each other, to our community, and presenting your presence to this town of Castle Rock. We pray that we see a change wash over this city. Jesus. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for being with us today, for, for meeting us in this space. 
for gathering with us, for calling us to your side, and for choosing to be in relationship with us. Um, Jesus, it's something we don't want to take for granted. We don't just want to call on the name of Jesus um, so casually forgetting the weight that that carries um, and the goodness of all you are, the power of who you are. So Jesus, yeah, thanks. And yes, we, we do want to see change. We want to be used. We want you to move us. We want to see your kingdom here in Castle Rock as it is in heaven. Jesus, be with your people today. Meet us. We believe that you're here because we've gathered. Um, but we need you to continue to move. Teach us. We're here to hear from you. We want to look like you. We want to be made more into your likeness, into your image. And Jesus, we come recognizing that's only possible through the work of you and the Holy Spirit in our lives. So keep meeting us. As scripture says, Lord, don't forget about us. Don't forsake us. In the, in the spaces where maybe we're struggling today, um, with whatever whatever needs we have, um, in the spaces where maybe we're struggling with what to believe and where to turn, um, in the spaces where we do believe, Jesus, we rejoice. And as this this prayer that um, Pastor Cherie kind of introduced to us a few weeks ago, or reminded us of at least, has become a little bit of an anthem. I pray that it would continue to catch fire, Jesus, that we would. The cry of our hearts would be first, less of me, more of you. And Jesus, that we believe, help our unbelief. Jesus, we believe, help our unbelief. So teach us today, teach us tomorrow. Keep guiding and shaping. Be with Pastor Sharia as she brings the word. Speak through her, anoint her with your spirit this morning, and maybe you'd be receptive to what it is you have to say to us and to speak to us, however hard it may be to hear. Um, help our unbelief, Jesus. We love you. Amen. Well, uh, if you couldn't tell, I like music. And I like musical instruments. I couldn't get my upright piano in my minivan today, uh, but I brought my mini one. It does work. It's pretty fabulous. Uh, you may have heard something like that in some songs online. Ren Collective uses that sometimes. Uh, I, love, I love everything about music. I love lots of instruments. My parents are watching online. I blame you, but I also bless you because I love what you've taught me about music. So, uh, oh, and hi, babe. He's watching, too. Uh, the ukulele. This is a super cool instrument. It sounds like uh, an island hug to me. It sounds like uh, you should come and be together while the waves are crashing. Right? Kind of feel that? Yeah, this was introduced in 1879 by a Portuguese immigrant. And it caught on in Hawaii, which is why you see a lot of um, Hawaiian people playing the ukulele. I love this instrument. This is really fun to play. Uh, I love the mandolin. This, this is a really cool instrument. It was introduced at, uh, and created back in the day uh, by, by some people. It's a, like a mandola. It was one of the very first instruments that it's kind of bright. Right? Kind of fun, kind of fun. Uh, it actually originated from a stick that was carved and it had four strings. And over time, in its introduction to Germany and France, uh, they developed it into the mandolin. It's a really cool instrument, super bright sounding. I love that. There is, uh, you saw my daughter play the flute. Uh-oh, don't knock over the mandolin. Those things are not cheap, right? Uh, you'll see a lot of other instruments. We'll talk about a few of them. And um, 
this is really cool. Angie brought this this morning. This is, is it your grandpa's? Your grandpa's violin? So we're going to take real good care of that um, because it's very special. Uh, there's lots of instruments here. And I had a friend that was given a guitar and it was his grandpa's guitar, and it had been sitting in the very back corner of his grandpa's room in his house. Hadn't been played for years and years, and the grandpa gave this guitar to his friend. And so he needed to go have it set up. And what, what happens when you get a guitar set up is they look at the truss rod, and they look at all of the strings, and they look how the frets are. They take care of the frets. If there's anything going on, they clean it. They put new strings on. They tune it up. They check for playability. And uh, so he, he left it there to get taken care of at the music store. And when he came back, he noticed something really weird. The, the guy who was setting up his guitar had set up a speaker and was playing music into the sound hole of the guitar. And he thought, that's weird. What does that have to do with any of this? He asked the gentleman, why are you playing music into my guitar? And the guy smiled, and he said, well, your guitar forgot it was a guitar. It's been sitting in the corner for a while, and it hasn't played any music. So I needed to remind it what it was made for. He thought about it. He thought, huh, music instruments need to be reminded what they're made for. So you'll see up here, I've got a djembe, and I've got a flute. I've got a travel guitar. Michael was asking, what's that, that weird-looking guitar? That's a travel guitar. That's what I take uh, when we go camping. There's a rain stick. This is my son's trumpet. There's a penny whistle. You've seen me play this before. You can actually play it with your nose. I've done it. Uh, shaker. There's shakers up here. There's harmonicas that my mother-in-law gave us. This is a melodica. It's like a little tiny keyboard, and you play it with this, like, hose, and you blow into it. Some of these instruments are uh, played with wind from your breath, and some are just played with, like, your fingers and picking um, the strings. And each one has very unique sound. They're very, very fun. Uh, by the way, this is an auto harp. It was just given to us by Chris Tiemann's na uh, neighbor. So the church now owns an auto harp. It's not tuned, so it sounds terrible right now, but it'll, it'll sound better later. Uh, all of these instruments sound really, really unique and wonderful individually. But together, there's something amazing that happens. And there is a song that plays some of these instruments together. You'll recognize it. Uh, I don't know if we'll have to mute it online for those of you online, but listen to this song, and uh, you'll see some of these instruments played, and just listen to how it sounds together. these unique instruments together, something beautiful happens. That's not to say that individually they aren't powerful and lovely, but together something amazing happens. We've been in a year-long journey of who we are as a people of God, as Nazarenes, like in the denomination of the Church of the Nazarene, and what our purpose is when we say we're Christ followers. Now, you may not have known that we've been in a year-long journey, but if you go back with me, you'll remember that's what we've been doing. We started the beginning of the year with a seat at the table series. Who remembers the seat at the table series? We had tables set up. We had seven uh, table hosts in here. Everybody sat around the table for like six or seven weeks in our series there. And what that was doing is reminding us that everyone is invited to the table of the Lord. Everyone is invited to the table of the Lord. And when we come to the table of the Lord, the love and care 
of God our Father, our Creator, begins to transform us, teaches us how to turn around and invite more people to the table of the Lord, where God then transforms them too. So everyone's invited to the seat at the table. Then the next series we did was the Bells series. That was the five habits of highly missional people. Who remembers that? We started off with those little party poppers and stuff went everywhere and Milt almost had a conniption and uh, we had little little glittery paper everywhere and I actually, I think there's still one over in their corner. I, I saw it. <laughs> it's still there. Um, that was learning about how to bless the world, how to eat together, inviting people inside and outside the church to eat together, how to listen, how to learn, and how to be sent. Do you guys remember that? that? That's something that we've been asking you to participate in the kingdom of God. Then we went into the season of Lent, into Easter. So the season of Lent is a preparation time where we get ready to celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is the transformation of of us as followers of Jesus Christ. It gives us life. The very fact that Jesus was the one who went to the cross for us, and that changes who we are as people of God. And so we went through Lent, and we went through Easter, and then we went into the Articles of Faith series, which we just ended a couple weeks ago, the Articles of Faith, in the Nazarene Manual. It's a book that they go into Scripture, and they find all of the things that, that they want their people that um, say, hey, I'm a Nazarene, these are the things that we say we believe and we live into. So the articles of faith, we went through those whole uh, list of, of articles of faith. And then last week, we did our Sunday serve is. We highlighted the word serve. Because this whole series from the beginning of this year until now is who you are as a people of God, what your purpose is, and what you're supposed to do with that. That's what we've been talking about this whole time. By the way, a really short word for that is participation. It's a good word for the kingdom of God. He calls us to participate in the kingdom of God. Today, we continue that year-long series of learning our Jesus-following purpose by preaching through all of the things that we presented last week. Now, if you weren't here last week, we had our Sunday service. We set up tables again. And we had all of our staff and all of our board present different areas in the church that they're kind of over, they kind of oversee. So there's worship, there's teens and uh, youth, there's missions, there's discipleship, there's facilities, there's finances. All of those things were presented, and the people around the table got to dream up ways that you could be involved or new things that you could see happening by the way, I wanted to let you know we will be presenting those to you, uh, but the board's going to look through them first. There are some things that we're already doing, some things that we're going to implement going forward that we thought, man, that's a really great idea. I'm so glad we're doing this as a family. Um, but it's going to require your participation, right? Because we don't just come to church on Sunday and an hour and a half and call that good as being the church, right? Oh. Thought you weren't with me. Whew, that's good. Yes, right. Amen. The world outside and even times inside of faith struggles with who we are, our identity. That's been a buzzword for the last probably 20 years. Um, there's sexual identity. There's um, personal uh, career identity, who we are and what we do and how we think. Um, there's the way that you like process your personality identity, all of these different ways of who you are. And I want, as a pastor here, to keep reminding you of who you are first. Because if you remember who you are first, then everything else gets defined under that. And who are you but a follower of Jesus Christ? Well, just like the instruments have unique sounds and purposes, you have roles and purposes in this world. But the world wants to give you a different definition, right? Kids, what does the world tell you that you should be defined by? What kind of video games do you play? What kind of clothes you wear? Oh, somebody say something. What kind of clothes you wear? 
what kind of job you're going to get, what kind of college you go to, how much money you have. Do you have a boat? How many houses do you own? Do you know this celebrity? I follow this celebrity. What kind of TikTok channel do you have? Do you have an Instagram? It goes on and on and on. Did you know that Matthew 24 speaks to this, you guys? It speaks to the way the world wants to define you, the way the world wants to tell you who you are. But it says, the love of most will grow, t- will grow cold toward Christ, and they will hate and betray each other. What? The love of most will grow cold toward Christ, and they will hate and betray each other. That doesn't sound like the church, does it? But I've seen it in the church. There's another passage, 2 Timothy 3 says that the people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. That doesn't happen. Boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash. Wow, this sounds really depressing. But you guys, I propose to you that at this whole year that we've been learning who we are, when we understand true identity defined by God alone, He changes us. He transforms how we think and how we look at the world. And these things shift. All of a sudden, extreme fitness and food and stocks and retirement amounts are not that big of a deal. Suddenly, our hobbies and our vacations and our bank accounts matter less Because God defines who we are. True biblical worship so satisfies our total personality that we don't have to shop around for man-made substitutes. Anybody say amen. 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 So check out this definition by William Temple. He's an old guy from back in the day. You can look him up. He said this about worship. For worship is the submission of all of our nature to God. The submission of all of our nature to God. It is the quickening of conscience by God's holiness, the nourishment of mind with God's truth, the purifying of imagination by God's beauty, the opening of the heart to God's love, the surrender of will to God's purpose, and all of this is gathered up in adoration, the most selfish emotion of which our nature is capable, and therefore the chief remedy for that self-centeredness Adoration of God, worship of God is the remedy to our self-centeredness. So I propose to you that not only does Jesus Christ fulfill identity and purposes in us, he defines that, but he allows us to participate in a beautiful kingdom symphony. Not just Michael, not just Maddie, not just Abby, not just Micah, but together we become a kingdom symphony. Symphony pointing to the king who gives us identity and purpose. So we've talked about your purpose and role. And today we're going to talk about that in the area of worship. I've mentioned it a number of times. It's one of my favorite areas of of ministry, of calling, of identity. Because worship encompasses not just the hour and a half on Sunday morning. It encompasses all of who we are. And I want to take you back to the very first time in Scripture that a congregation got together to worship God. It's found in Exodus 24. And I'm going to read verses 1 to 8 to you. Then he said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and worship from afar. Moses alone shall come near to the Lord, but the others shall come shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. But then Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. 
And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and he built an altar at the foot of the mountain and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do, and we will obey. The very first time a group of people worshiped together and a covenant was made with a people of God. Now, there were lots of covenants that happened previous to that. We can go all the way back to Genesis 2, where God made a covenant with Adam and Eve. What was the covenant? You're going to have dominion over the earth, but you shouldn't eat of something. Kids, what was it? What was in the garden they shouldn't eat of? The fruit of the tree. Yep, you got it. So they shouldn't eat of that, but they would have eternal life. They would get to hang out with God, and they would be able to steward all the earth. That was the very first covenant that was made in Scripture. The second covenant was with Noah. Who knows the story of Noah? Kids, teens, what's the story of Noah? Noah built a canoe. Oh, what did he build? a boat, and what happened in the boat? Two of every animal into the boat. The world flooded so that they would survive, and what was God's covenant when the boat finally came to rest? I will never flood the earth again is what God's covenant was with Noah. Then God made a covenant with Abram and Sarai, Abraham and Sarah. And what was the covenant to them? Remember, they were barren, and they were super old when they had their first baby. Thank thank you, Jesus, that doesn't happen any any time now. They were promised a child, but what else? God told Abram and Sarai, I'm going to make you into a great nation. And you're going to bless the world. That was part of the covenant with Abram and Sarai. And by the way, this is really crazy because God like, was a future teller when he, I mean, God is a future teller. God knows all the things. But God told Abram and Sarai that your seed will not only multiply, but at some point you're going to be taken into captivity. But don't worry, I got you. And I'm going to bring you out of captivity later. And you're going to be a people that blesses the world. So hold on to that thought. Then he had a covenant with Isaac. Abraham had had Isaac, the one kid that Abraham was promised, right? Isaac, they took him up to the mountain. He was going to kill Isaac, but he didn't. He saved his life. Isaac grew up. And Isaac actually got this same covenant as Abraham. God said to Isaac, I want you to go and multiply and, and bless the world. That's the Abrahamic covenant. I'm giving it to you, Isaac, again. And then Isaac had 12 sons. His favorite was who? We just learned that VBS, Joseph. Joseph in the coat of how many colors? Did I, did I do that wrong? Oh, I did. I skipped it. Sorry. Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Thank you so much. Jacob had 12 sons. I skipped a line. I'm so sorry. Jacob had 12 sons. Jacob's youngest son was Joseph. Technicolor dream coat. It's totally not the story, but it's cool. He was sold to Egypt. And God saved his family through Joseph, right? So all of these covenants happened. Then there was a new Pharaoh, and and the Israelites that had been saved and were in Egypt, they multiplied and were blessing the world. And then what happened in Egypt? There was a new Pharaoh who didn't know who. He didn't know Joseph. He didn't know the story of Joseph. And so suddenly he sees all these people, and all these people are multiplying, and he gets a little freaked out because they're not Egyptians. And so he does what? Takes them into slavery. He enslaves them. But God sent Moses. And Moses, through his whole story that's super crazy and super rad, brings the Israelite people out of Egypt, crosses the Red Sea on dry ground, And approximately 50 days later, they meet with God on Mount Sinai. Moses meets with God, and he comes down, and he talks to the people. And that's that story in Exodus 24. So the covenant with the people of Israel is what? 
What's the covenant with the people of Israel? You will be my own treasure from among all people, for all the earth is mine, but you will be to me a kingdom of kohanim, of priests, and you will bless the world. So he also gave them Ten Commandments and a whole bunch of other rules and all these festivals that are actually really cool to, like, dig into if you ever have time to go into Scripture and read about all those festivals. We see the people of God coming together for the first time in an act of worship in Exodus 24. And I want to give you five truths about worship from this passage of Scripture. The very first is super cool. The meeting is convened by God. Wait, what? The meeting is convened by God. The word convened means to bring together for a meeting or to assemble together. So God called the people out of Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, and he said, I want to meet with you. So many times on Sunday morning, we think this is our idea. We think that we should come to church and check a box because that's what you do on Sunday mornings. Did you know that this is God's idea and it is God's invitation to you? That changes everything for me. I don't know if it changes everything for you, but because God is inviting me to meet with him with a group of people who are in love with him and want to know more, he wants to meet with me, so he's inviting me to Sunday morning at the Connection Church of the Nazarene at 10 a.m. to meet with you and meet with him. I don't want to miss that. I want to meet with God, with you. The meeting is convened by God. We become a people of God who meet with the Savior because of a radical saving event that began way back in Scripture, still happens today, and he calls us the Kahal Yahweh, the assembly of God. Sunday mornings, we come to church not because we tell you to come to church, not because it's just always at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning at the Connection Church, but because God says, I want to meet with you as an assembly of people who love me, want to be encouraged by my word, and meet with me. That's good. That's not my idea. You don't have to say amen to my idea. That's God's idea. God calls us here to meet together. The second, the people are arranged in a structure of responsibility and participation. Or, in short, the people participate. (laughs) That's so cool. This was not intended to be a picture of leaders and an audience. It's not a show. I'm not here to be a show for you. I'm here to participate because God has invited each of us to be involved in the life of the church to get together and hear his word, to participate in the things of the body, not just on Sunday for an hour and a half, but throughout the week. And the reason we get together on Sunday morning not only is because God invited us to, but because we need to encourage each other because, man, it is hard out there, right? It's not easy. And I need to see your faces and say, yeah, you get it. And you love Jesus. And you're for me. And you're on my side and I'm on yours. Participation. 1 Corinthians 12 says this, just as one body, though one, has many parts, many parts, but all its parts form one body. So it is with Christ Jesus. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Many, but one. The third point that I want to bring to your attention is that the proclamation of God's word is heard. From Exodus 24, you see that the word of God is proclaimed to the people. Did you, not, did you know that worship on a Sunday morning for an hour and a half, that's not just singing, by the way, worship is this whole encompassing time together, and then we continue in worship throughout the week, but this hour and a half of worship together is not complete without hearing from the Lord. 
It's not complete without hearing from the Lord. So if you're leaving this place and you have not heard from the Lord, I invite you to come right back to your seat and say, what were you going to say? Because I missed it. I don't ever want to leave. Hmm. I don't ever want to leave this place with you without hearing from the Lord. Kids, don't ever leave kids' church. Don't ever leave this place. Don't ever leave this sanctuary without hearing from the Lord. You can hear from him. He talks to you. He talks to me. He talks to the littlest, to the oldest. Don't ever leave without hearing from the Lord. Worship is not complete without hearing from the Lord. The next point, people accepted the conditions of the covenant. Do you hear that? Did you hear that in, in Exodus 24? The people answered, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. There's an acceptance, a commitment to hear and obey the word of the Lord. It is so easy in this day and age to hear from the Lord. Ryan Guitro and I were talking about this with, with Chris one of our Wednesday nights. It's so easy at times to hear from the Lord. Then you enter into the world. The world's really loud and the world's really distracting. And suddenly... You forgot what you heard, and you forgot to obey because you forgot what you heard he t- he'd tell you, like, right? He, he told us something. He tells us something every Sunday, and it's a matter of hearing and obeying the word of the Lord. So people accepted the conditions of the covenant. Judaic and Christian traditions show an aspect of continuous renewal of personal commitment in every time they gather. Now, admittedly, we see the people of Israel commit to this in obedience and willingness, but then we know the rest of the story. What happens with the Israelite people? Do they obey and they bless the world and all of it's such a great story? They were like us. Oh, Chris, Timon. Oh, right? God? Every time you speak, every time you say something to me, I want to be quick to listen, and I want to be quick to obey, and I want to keep obeying. So, Lord, help me obey. Help me not fall away from obedience. It's so easy in this world, isn't it? So easy in this world. The good thing is that God continues to draw us back every single time. You made a commitment with me. You made a a covenant with me. You're with me. Come back. Let's start again. And the final point is that in Exodus 24, in a worship service, the very first one that we see in time in Scripture, ends with a dramatic symbol of ratification. That means the seal happened. The agreement was sealed. It was covenanted to. Milt built these. These are just pieces of wood. They're not magical. But they make you kneel. I mean, you could stand over, it'd be kind of awkward, and then you could kind of touch them, but that's not what they're there for. They're there to kneel in front of Why? Why do we do this? What is this? I'm not worshiping this piece of wood, right? It's just a piece of wood. What we call you to when we say, hey, if you are hearing from the Lord, if you are are hearing the Lord ask you to do something, there's a place to come to say, I will. And what you do when you get in a posture of kneeling is what we say all the time. It's a recognition that says God is God and I am not. And I bow at his feet because he is good and kind and holy and knows how this rolls out. My life needs to take a posture of obedience and submission. I don't like that word. That's a hard word. But every single time I posture myself in a submissive way to God, 
God does incredible transformation in my heart and in my life and in my mind and the decisions I make. Kids, when you come and you kneel at this altar, you're not worshiping the pieces of wood. You're worshiping God with your life to say, I give you my life. I ratify this covenant with you. I seal it with an act that says you are God and I am not. That's what those are for. You can do it in your seat, sure. You can do it in your heart quietly, sure. But sometimes we have to have an action. And they ratified in Exodus 24, they ratified this with blood. The Old Testament, those sacrifices were made in the Old Testament as a covenant seal. It kind of gets gross. I'm not going to describe what they do to the animals to have a covenant. Ask your parents, okay? This is gross. But what we know is that the Old Testament seal points to the New Testament seal of who did what. Who sealed it? Who covenanted with us? Jesus Christ gave a once and for all blood sacrifice and said, done, me. I bear it. I seal it. I covenant with you. If you will accept it, I covenant with you for all time to bear your sin and save your life. That's cool. Once and for all. We see this worship example in Acts 2. Who knows what happens in Acts 2, kids? Do you remember? There's a story of a whole bunch of people who gathered in the upper room. They heard a sound like wind, and they saw tongues of fire on the top of everybody's head, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Pentecost was a holiday was a festival was a special time that pointed to mount sinai 50 days after the people left egypt they went across the red sea they were freed from their captors their captors they were freed from their captors they went across the red sea they met jesus or they met god at mount sinai god said here's my new covenant with you i want you to be a blessing to the world i'm going to be your god you're going to be a holy people and then in Pentecost, when they were all the disciples and all the people were gathered together in the upper room, 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, when they were freed from slavery, to who? Sin and death. You guys, this is so good. 50 days. They met up in the upper room. They worshiped together. They heard from the Lord, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit because they were free. Get out. That was the worship service. So why do we gather? We gather to worship God because we are a free people who are invited by God to gather together every time we can. Not just every Sunday, by the way. Scripture says every chance you get, gather together because God has invited us to a place of worship. The same God that was in Exodus 24 is the same God today. Same God, same God. He has freed me from sin and death. He has freed you from sin and death. And he wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit as an act of ratification, you are my covenant people. You are my covenant people. You're a holy kohanim, a holy priesthood that what? Just hangs out and gets coffee and does our job and earns our money and does our things. No! I am here to bless the world. I am here to bring the goodness of the light of the kingdom of God into dark places and turn on the light switch. That's what we're called to do. So as the worship team comes forward, this morning, we're going to sing the song we just learned, the same God. Oh, God, I need you. Oh, God, I need you now. Oh, rock of ages from Exodus 24 all the way to October 2nd, 2022.
You are the same God. You guys, if you feel like, man, there's, a, there's some covenants I need to make with the Lord today. This altar is here. You can get down on your knees. I invite you to do that. It's an act of obedience. You can do that in your chair. You can do that in the quietness of your heart. That's okay too. But as we sing this song, the same God, I invite you to understand why we come here on Sundays. What are we doing? Why do we sing songs? Because we praise the one who sets us free and invites us every time to be together and worship his name. The same God, the same God who said that to Moses, the same God that said that to Adam and Eve and Noah and Isaac and Abraham and Sarah, all the way, all the way till today. The same God. Jesus, as we sing this song this morning, as we engage your spirit, as we navigate what it is to worship you, I ask, Lord, that you would settle in our hearts why we're here. What is our role to do? Lord, I know that you've given gifts and talents to each person. You've given gifts and skills and abilities. But Lord, it's not a solo act. We come to be a kingdom of God that worship you together, that bless the world together. So Jesus, today, I just praise you that you're the same God today that you are and you were in Exodus 24. We worship you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand? Let's sing this together. Calling on the God of Jacob.
that we serve a God that we can trace back all the way to before we even knew time was a thing. Same God. Yeah? You heard your children then. You hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answered prayer back then. And you will answer now. You are that Moses called on, the same God that Mary called on. That blows my mind that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the only unchanging thing, and we give you praise for that. Holy Spirit, thank you. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Almighty river, come and fill Come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. Hear this benediction. First Peter 2 9. Receive it. But you are a chosen people, a royal Kohanim priesthood a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his glorious light. Go in his peace. Amen.